that. You find your passion. You find your passion. I was very, very lucky to find it, you know, when I was uh, seven or eight years old. And, you know, and, and fortunately, my children have found their passion. My, you know, one son loves farming like nothing else. One son loves music like everything else. And, and all three of them love philanthropy and what they get to do. You're lucky in life when you, you find it. And uh, you can't guarantee you're going to find it in your first job out. But I always tell college students that come out, I say, take the job that you would take if you were independently wealthy. You know, that's, you're going to do well at it. What kills great businesses, if you look at, I do, I do believe in looking at history. And I, I, and I try to, I, I like to study failure, actually. And my, my partner says, all I want to know is where I'll die, so I'll never go there. And, and we want to see what has caused businesses to go bad. And the biggest thing that kills them is complacency. I mean, you, you want a, a restlessness, a feeling that, you know, that, that somebody's always after you but you're going to stay ahead of them. You, you always want to be on the move. And, and uh, uh, when you've got a great business, but uh, you really, the, the danger would always be that you rest on your laurels. But that, that, that is the key, to, to compete the same way when you've got 1.8 billion servings being sold daily as when you were selling in O'Ten a day. And, and that restlessness, that belief that, that Tomorrow is more exciting than today. You know, you just have to have it permeate the organization. And Tom Watson said it best. He said, you know, he said, he said, I'm no genius, but I'm smart in spots and I stay around those spots. Well, I try and stay around those spots and I, I just don't have a, a problem if, if, uh, if somebody says, you know, you're wrong on something. I just, I go back and look at the facts and, and, and I think that I think that really is much more important, frankly, than, than having a few points of IQ or, or having an extra course or two in, in school or anything of the sort. You need emotional stability. He was a wonderful man, and he was my professor at Columbia. I read his book when I was 19 at the University of Nebraska, and I'd started investing when I was 11, and I started reading about it when I was like seven. So I'd gone through all, I read every book in the Omaha Public Library that it was on, by the time I was 12, on, on investing in stock market. And I had a lot of fun, but I never really found out, I never got grounded in anything. And it, it was it was entertaining, but it wasn't going to be profitable. And then I read Graham's book, The Intelligent Investor, when I was at the University of Nebraska. And pulled that it all just together. opened the whole thing up to me. Yeah, and I, and I named my my oldest son is named Howard after my dad, Graham Buffett, and, and he was a marvelous man. Never expected anything from me in return. Well, I, I received in a variety of forms, particularly from my father when I was very young, but I mean, he, he basically, I think, taught me how to live, not that I did it perfectly or anything like that, but I mean, he was giving me lessons, but he wasn't doing it by preaching to me, he was doing it by example, but basically, uh, well, the biggest lesson, in a sense, I got is the power of unconditional love. I mean, I think there is no power on earth like unconditional love. And I think that if you offer that to your child, I mean, you're 90% of the way home. And uh, maybe days when you don't feel like it, it's not uncritical love. <laughs> That's a different animal. But, but to know you always can come back, I mean, that is, that is huge in life. That takes you a long, long way. And I would say that every parent out there that, that can extend that to their child at a very young age, it's going to make for a better human being.